Hi, it's Rob from the Brush and Balcom. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to paint a Death Guard Rhino. Now I have put a few little modifications to it, but the basic painting is all the same. So the first colour we're using is Vallejo Russian Uniform World War II. It's one of the Flames of War colours, but again, any olive drab will do. All we're going to do is paint a few panels on the Rhino with this just to give them that Death Guard white and green kind of colouring. So these little sunken areas on the Rhino are ideal to do with this because it's an area that you can paint up with a different colour and it just provides a bit of a break up from the kind of monotone of the white I suppose or the off white is going to be. Also going to do a stripe up one of the doors too as you can see there. Next up we're going to be using Citadel Lead Belcher. It's a nice dark metallic -y colour I'm going to use this to do all of the trophy spikes, parts of the exhaust, the little kind of stoppers on the tops of the doors where they'd hit the ground, all that kind of thing, and all the tracks too. So give all of them a good coat of Citadel lead belcher. That gives us a nice base for when we come to do some shading and weathering on them and making them look all grotty. Next up, it's Vallejo Modeler Rust. I'm going to use this to do some of the details, which some of them have been stuck on afterwards, like this shield from the Blight Kings. We're going to do the little bracket, which is holding up each of the trophy spikes, and some of the other details, like the bits that are holding on the spikes on the ram at the front there. Just a few of the little details, just to break that up and get that kind of rusty bronze colour on there. Now we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Rakarth Flesh. I'm going to use this to paint all of the skulls and the bits of bone on the miniature. So you've got the bony spur coming out the top of the Death Guard chap's head there. It's got a number of different skulls and a few little bits and pieces like that. So paint all those with the Rakarth Flesh. We can move on to the next colour. So this is the first big vehicle I've really tackled for the channel. If you want to see any more vehicles and stuff like that, let me know. I know there's been a bit of a call for a Black Legion one of some sort, so I'll get onto that soon. Next up is Citadel Moot Green. I'm going to use this to paint some of the smaller details, like the glass panels, the lens on his helmet there, and a few other little details too. Because I do quite like this because it's a really kind of bright and almost bilious green. It's nice to just add there's a bit of an eye catcher and add a few details with it. It stands out against the kind of dull, miserable drab of the rest of the miniature. Now it's going to be a little bit of Citadel Mournfang Brown. You can use this just to paint up the handle of the side at the back here. And this may be classed as a bit of a cheap vehicle because you're not really doing much light being cast over or lighting on it because of the colour of it and it's mainly just going to be weathering and stuff like that that brings out the details. So a different tank which is a more monotone colour might be a bit more interesting to paint as well. Now it's a little bit of Citadel Mephist on red. I'm going to use this to paint some of the smaller details like the mouths of the corpse heads, the bloody stump of the neck at the mouth of the weird little panel at the back here which I just thought looked quite funky so stuck that on there around the skulls they've got the eyes on and also in the mouth of the Death Guard fellow and the Nurgling just behind him in hindsight I'd probably paint the Nurgling separately just because it is a pain to paint it where it's stuck down, so I wouldn't recommend putting one back there until you've painted it. It's now using a little bit of Citadel Balor Brown just to paint the corpse heads. Or one of the corpse heads at least. And then this little 
piece of, I don't know what it is, on one of the spikes. I started painting it like skin and wasn't really sure what it was, so I just left it alone. And we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Kislev Flesh. I'm going to use this to paint the fleshy tube on the front of the Rhino here. And also the second corpse head, which is on the right hand side. And looks a little bit like Matt Smith, who played Doctor Who. Once it's finished painting, that wasn't intentional, but does have a kind of look about him. Once you've got that finished off, we can move on to the next colour. Now we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Nurgling Green, and we're just going to give the Nurgling a good coat of this. sure if this Nurgling was from a particular figure or not. I've got a little drawer in the bits box full of Death Guard and Nurgle pieces and he was just sitting off in there so he thought sticking to the top as though he's running across the top of the Rhino. But I'm not too sure whether he's part of another figure or whether he's off something in particular. He's a great little Nurgling though, I love the way he's running along holding the incense bell there. Now it's a little tiny bit of Bane Blade Brown. I'm using this to do the leather strap on the side. Also use this to do some of the hair on one of the corpse heads too. Like so. Next up, we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Squig Orange. I'm just going to paint the hair for the left hand skull head here, or corpse head. Again, could probably have been quite a little bit easier painting these up before sticking them on. You'd have to drill a hole in the hair and sort of like carve that out a little bit so it'd fit on the hook. It looks quite decent hung on the other side there. Now it's a little bit of Zerius purple. We're going to use this for the small tentacle that's growing out the side. I'm going to use this as the top of the tentacle. I'm going to do the inside using Citadel Pink Horror next. Now it's going to be pink horror just to paint the inside of that tentacle and also the tongue of the chap on the right there. A little bit off camera there, sorry. We will get that all pinked up, and once that's done, we're going to move on to the first shade. So the first shade is going to be Citadel Seraphim Sepia. It's going to do all of the armour for the Death Guard chap. Now we're going to start painting this onto all the detailed areas. Now, if you're looking on the top here, you've got like a kind of cupola, just to the right of where his head's popping out there. I'm just going to do most of that with the Seraphim Sepia because there's a lot of details on there. But for the most part of this, you're just going to go around the detail or into the ridges. You're not going to do the whole model with the Seraphim Sepia because it's such a huge area to paint up and try and get a bit rough and smooth afterwards. So you can see here where it's gone. And we're going to start with the Citadel Agrax Air Shade. So the first layer of Seraphim Sepia has mainly just been done to do around doors and little details and things. I'm going to start using the Grax Air Shade on all of the parts that we use the model air rust. What you're finding this is I keep going back to different shades as I'm doing things and it's just a way of doing the weathering. So you've got the basic weathering and recess shading for the 
main bulk of the tank. Then we want to a bit of Citadel BL tan green and go over all of the Mook green now. So the recess shading for the bulk of the tank. Then we'll do the colours for the bulk of the tank. And then we'll be going on to the weathering where we'll use the Seraphim Sepia again to do runs and things like that. And we'll also come on to do it a third time using Seraphim Sepia. And that's just to discolour some of the panels underneath where we've put the big spots of rust on. So if you follow us on Instagram, you may have seen this tank showing nearly completed the other day. I'll go into null noil just to go over all the lead belcher sections. But I thought the start to finish of a tank like this would be a bit more interesting than the plane of a Black Legion one or something like that. There's a lot more cool details you can do on something like this. You want to really use an old brush for when you're doing this too. You don't want to batter one of your new ones doing all the shading because you're shading that much of it, it will wreck the brush a little bit. So next up we're using a little bit of Tesseract Glow. You're just going to paint this onto the smoky bit coming out of the incense ball that the Nurgling is holding. You may see the Nurgling has got the Tesseract Glow on him as well a little bit later, but I do repaint him with Nurgling Green and use a different wash on him a bit later on. So don't paint him with the Tesseract Glow. Now I'm going to use Citadel Athonian Camo Shade. I'm going to use this to paint up the Balor Brown chap with the red hair. And you're also going to use it to paint up the fellow who looks a little bit like Matt Smith. Give a good coating on this tube at the front here because when we recolour that, that'll just give it that horrible, sickly, dead look to it. Now we're going on to Citadel Caro Bird Crimson. I'm going to use this to shade the mouths of the two corpse heads and also the wounds and mouth of the Nurgling and the mouth of the Death Guard fellow. Once you've got these done, we can move on to the next colour. Next up, we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Druchy Violet. I'm just going to use this to shade all of the tentacle. So that's the purple part and the pink part. Now it is Citadel Fugan Orange Shade. I'm going to be using this just to shade the hair on the left hand corpse head. Now it's the longest section, which is going to be Citadel Ushabti Bone mixed with white, so you get that slightly off white colour that I've been using for all the Death Guard. And now we're just going to paint all of the white panelling with this colour. So you want to be leaving the shade around all the bolts and the details and things like that. So I say this section does take quite a long time to get finished. Because you're almost just brush painting the whole tank again. You want to spray it with a similar colour before you start and then work on it like that. So you've only got to touch up the edges, that'll probably work too. Once you finish this, we can go on to the next colour. So you can see it with the off-white painted all over. And just the sepia in the recess shades. So now what we're doing here is reapplying the Kislev Flesh skin tone back to the fleshy tube. We also want to do Kislev Flesh on the corpse heads on the side of the tank and also the strange kind of face which I put on the back door as well. Once you've finished these you can move on to the next colour. Now I'm just going to use a little bit of Citadel Snakebite Leather Contrast. We're going to paint this over the Bane Blade Brown 
was used to do the leather strap on the handle of the scythe. Like so. Now we've added some Citadel Deepkin flesh to the Kislev flesh to give that a slightly lighter tone. And we're now going to start applying this to the faces on the two corpse heads. And also you're going to start working this onto the flesh tube on the front too. Next up, we're adding some more deepkin flesh to the previous mix. We're going to highlight the tube on the front, the corpse heads, and that face at the back too. Really want to be trying to pick out the details on this tube here. There is loads of little ripples and lumps and bumps in it. So if you can try and pick them out, that'll help it look pretty good. I'll add in some deepkin flesh to this previous mix once more. I'm just going to add one more layer of highlights to the corpse heads, the tube on the front, and the strange stretchy face on the back of the tank. I'm thinking about it, the video probably will be a lot shorter if I'd actually just painted the tank, but in case you're adding any details to it or any little different bits and pieces, at least you've got a few tips on how to paint the rest of the bits up. Now I'm going to use some Citadel Rackarth Flesh. I'm going to start recolouring all the skulls on the tank. And also all the bone. So that sort of bony spur growing out of his head. The horn on the nurgling and that kind of thing too. But all the skulls you want to be reapplying the Rackarth Flesh and making sure you're leaving some of the sepia in the recesses. Now we're just going to add some Citadel Ushabti bone to the mix. We're going to start highlighting the skulls. This is Rakhar flesh and Ushabti bone for the first highlight. Good thing about these skulls is you can pick out the teeth quite easily. It's just a nice little detail that shows up without much effort, which is quite cool. Now I'm just going to use some pure Ushabti bone. I'm going to do another highlight onto the skulls. This one will be a little bit brighter than the previous one. You can see it makes the details stand out a lot more. Plenty of little details on these skulls, like the cracks and the little lumps and bumps on the cheekbones and the teeth around the nose, that kind of thing. So you can get a lot of detail picked out on these. I'm using the Army Painter Wargamer character brush here, just so I can get a bit more detail on them. And the final highlight for the bone is going to be a little bit of white mixed into Ushabti bone. And I'm just going to pick out all those details once more, leaving some of the previous shades of highlight visible beneath this one. Now I'm going to use some Vallejo White I'm going to pick out the teeth and the eyes on the corpse heads. I'm 
pick them up slightly off camera. And remember with the eyes, you want to be dragging the brush away from the nose when you're painting those eyes. I'm going to use a tiny little spot of Vallejo Black. I'm just going to paint a dot in the centre of each of these eyes. Like so. I'm just going to start highlighting the red hair with a bit of squig orange. Start just picking out the ridges in the hair. I'll make them stand out against the fugan orange shade. Not too much, but it just just bring that little bit of brightness to the hair. We're going to use a little bit of Wild Rider Red from Citadel just to highlight that. So working on the little tentacle, we're going to return to Citadel Zarius Purple. I'm just going to gently and lightly go over the tentacle, leaving the Drucci Violet in the recesses. There isn't really too much detail in this, there's only a couple of little pock marks and a little ridge around the bottom of the tentacle where it joins onto the pink underside. So we're going to highlight that with a little bit of Citadel Gene Stealer Purple. Again we're going to try and pick out the details, although there isn't too many of them. Like so. Now we're going to highlight that with pink horror. We're also going to use this layer to reapply the pink horror to the underside of the tentacle too. There's plenty of ridges on the underside of the tentacle so you can get them quite easily. Do make sure that you go from one side to the other as when you twist this round you'll see you can access the side where those razors are and pick them out quite nicely. So we're now going to highlight the underside using a little bit of Citadel Emperor's Children. I'm just going to do the top edges where the light will be catching it. Next up, Citadel Moot Green. We're going to reapply this to the lens on the front of his helmet there. You're just going to be doing a sort of crescent that covers kind of the bottom left half of that circle, but with a curve, so it is a proper crescent on there. Now we're going to add a little bit of white to the moot green. I'm just going to do a highlight on that. Now I'm just doing quick highlights on the glass really. It's basically going to be almost like a little half circle of light at the top of them. And then for the lens we're going to be doing a slightly smaller crescent on the bottom left hand side of that. I'm going to add a little bit more white to the previous mix. I'll just do the same again, but this time I'm going to cover a smaller area of the crescent and the half circles on those windows. Like so. 
Next up, we're just going to use some Vallejo White. We're going to do the final highlights to these lenses and reflective bits. So we're going to do a really slight thin line on the bottom left and a spot on the top right of the eye lens. And we're just going to pick out some edges on these little lenses on the front of the cupola. I'm going to use some Vallejo White. I'm just going to paint the headlamps on the front of the Rhino. I'm going to be doing these in a really simple and quick and easy method here. Now I'm going to use some Citadel Thonian Camo Shade. I'm going to use this to shade the Nurgling. Once this is done, we're just going to go on to another shade before we come back and do the actual nurgling. So it'll just give the shade time to dry. Like so. Now we're going to start working on a bit more weathering. I'm going to use Citadel Seraphim Sepia again. This time we're going to use a nice thin brush. We're just going to be doing some runs of sepia from all of the bolts and the underside of all the edges. So where this green bit goes down, you've got the flat edge at the bottom there. You're going to be doing some runs from that too. Basically going to do this all the way around the vehicle. We're just going to work on the runs at the moment. We're not going to put it all over the blades or anything like that. We will come to do that later. Did all the runs done. I'm going to use a little bit of Citadel Lead Belcher because the Ethereum camo shade wasn't dry and we're just going to do these cross pieces across the lights here. Oftentimes I've seen to flip from one part to the next. It's usually because I'm waiting for a shade to dry while I paint something else on the miniature. With the lead belcher sections done, now move on to the nurgling. I'm going to start by using a little bit of Citadel Nurgling Green. I'm going to reapply the colour to his skin. Now there is a lot of cool details on this nurgling. There's little creases, a few little boils, a few open wounds. Just try and pick out all those details with the nurgling green and you'll know where you're going to highlight when you come to do the next layer. Now we've added a little bit of Vallejo White to the Nurgling Green. I'm now going to start highlighting the skin. So I'm going to start thinking about where the light is going to be catching it, and mainly highlighting those areas. Once you finish those highlights, I'm going to use a little bit of Citadel Dawn Yellow and pick out the nice boils that are growing on his back, on his shoulder and his head. As I say, probably would have been far easier to glue this guy down after he was painted. Because where he is, it's an absolute pig to try and get at him and paint all the details on him. When you've got trophy spikes all over the sides where you want to be putting your brush. I'm going to add a little bit of white to him, painting his eyes and his teeth.
like so. I'm going to use Citadel Cassandora Yellow, and this is going to be to do the headlamps on the front, and you're just going to put some spot of that inside each of the sections. I want it so that you've got enough that it's coloured that headlamp yellow, and around where the metallic kind of covers for it are, you want it to have a slight orange hint there, so there's going to be more around the edges of it. If you get too much on there and it's all orange, you can just dip the end of the brush in and just absorb some of that extra shade. I'll sort that out for you. Now I'm going to use a little bit of black. I'm just going to do the pupils on the nurgling. Like so. Okay, now we're going to start on the weathering. So we're going to start with Citadel Agrax Earthshade. I'm going to use this around the bases of all the trophy spikes, around all the details on the trophy spikes too, so there's shade in there, like there's a build-up of dirt and grime on them. You can also do some of this along the length of the trophy spike too, depending on where you want to put the rust. You want to go around all of the metallic parts where you've shaded with null oil and just pick out the areas that you want to darken up and grime up. So any reg ridges and lips and stuff like that you want to have the grime on. I'm going to go with a little bit of Citadel Nihilac Oxide and we're just going to add a bit of verdigris to all these model air rust areas. But where it's not going to get rubbed away, they're probably the areas that you'd have a little bit more on. So with the verdigris added, I'm now going to use Citadel Seraphim Sepia. And the same as we did with the Agrax Air Shade, you're now going to add this to the areas that you're going to rust quite heavily. You add this first, just because it gives it a nice kind of orangey yellow base where it looks like the metal started to discolour before the rust starts forming on it properly. I'm not going to do too much on the tracks because obviously the tracks are going to be working and they're not going to be working very well if they're all rusted to death so they're going to be left pretty much normal just a bit of discoloration. Now for the typhus corrosion now you want to use an old brush for this because it will ruin your brushes if you use too much of it. I'm just going to add patches of typhus corrosion to the lead belcher areas and also patches of corrosion to the hull as well. I will be doing a full video on how to do this kind of corrosion to vehicles. That will be coming on Sunday. In the areas like the exhaust and stuff like that you do want to add quite a bit on there so it's really really badly corroded on those. So you can see here, this is where the patches of corrosion have added to it are, where we've put the type of corrosion. Now using the Citadel Dry Paint Riser Rust, I'm just going to be dry brushing that over all the areas of typhus corrosion. Now you don't want to go overly heavy with it, but you do want the orange to show through. You also don't want it to be an even orange all over. You just want lighter oranges in some parts and darker oranges in other areas, so depending on how much you dry brushing over a certain area, it'll go a brighter orange. You just want that to be a bit varied. I'm now going to be using some more Citadel Seraphim Sepia. I'm now going to use this to do the runs which will be coming off the rusted areas we've just added. And also adding a bit of discoloration around those rusted areas too. So you want to just put a light, light coat of this around all those areas that have rusted. Like where it kind of discolors the paint when the rust is starting off so the rust would spread to those areas. Just add a really faint hint of sepia around each of those rust spots. I'm going to use Seraphim Sepia once more once that's dried. I'm just going to add lots of runs to these areas. I'm actually using a Citadel small layer brush here because that's a really good point. We're just adding more runs to the 
areas that we've already put them but now you're going to have those runs going over the areas that you've just discolored and that just gives it a kind of layered effect so you've had the initial runs where it started to rust you've then got the discoloration around the rusty areas and then runs coming from those rusty areas also we're going to use a little bit of citadel fugan orange i'm just going to add little hints of orange to different areas sometimes on the rust sometimes little runs running down and other times just little patches of it coming up off the rust little brighter spots like so that done we're now going to use a little bit of Vallejo red wash I'm going to use this to do around the eyes the mouth and nose and also around the stump of the neck on the corpse heads around here we're also going to use it to do around all of the boils on the nurgling too And the final thing we're going to do is use a little bit of Citadel Blood for the Blood God and add just little bits of gore to a few different areas on it. So we're going to have the corpse heads, some coming out the mouth, the nose, a little trickle by the ears. We're also going to add some to the lumpy bumpy parts on that fleshy tube on the front and also running from the wounds on the Nurgling and that weird face thing on the back of the rhino. And that is the finished rhino. Really, really happy with how that turned out. Unfortunately, it's going to mean a lot more work when I come to do the Disco Land Raider and finish that off. But really pleased with that, and it's going to look great on the tabletop. Thanks for watching, I hope you've enjoyed the video and if you have please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future content. Also think about subscribing to some of our other social media linked below. Thanks very much. If you like the channel and you enjoy the videos and you'd like to support us, please head to our coffee page linked below where you can buy us a brew. Thanks very much.